Thank you. And sometimes people say that I travel around too much. But honestly, I don't fly anywhere. On Monday morning, I will go to Perth Airport, I will sit on the aircraft, and that's all I do. I can't fly. The aircraft does the flying, I just do the sitting. And I'm always, sometimes people say, well, are you going to be here? I'm always here. Only sometimes here happens to be Singapore, sometimes here manages to be London. I'm always here though. <laughs> it's a different way of perceiving life. Wherever you are, that's where you are. I call that here. Which means all the traveling, you sit in the car, you sit in the aircraft, you just walk. You're always here, wherever you're traveling. And that's a much more peaceful way of traveling. You're never at the destination, you're never at your origin. You're always on the journey, here I am. And that means you're far more at peace. Enjoy where you are and be here. So anyway, um, now we can do some meditation, which gives me an opportunity to think of some more jokes to tell afterwards. Or interesting stories. Just, oh no, I'm not going to. I'm going to shut up. <laughs> so please sit in a reasonably comfortable position. On a chair, on a stool, on a cushion. And once you're sitting, sitting down, please bring your attention to this moment right now. We're on a journey of meditation this evening. This is where you are right now. You're here. You don't think where you're going. Don't be concerned where you came from. This is where you are. So you collect your mindfulness and bring it into this present moment. Once your mindfulness is in this present moment, the awareness of mindfulness is never enough. You have to add kindness. So where you are, you can be at peace with it. And be kind to it, be warm to it. And then, it becomes kindfulness. So you, first of all, you're kindful to your body. Honestly, are you sitting comfortably? And that's when I start looking at my legs, especially my feet. I start there, they're the furthest part from my head. And when I was a young monk in Thailand, my teacher there, Ajahn Chah, used to say, all these Western monks, they all have stupid feet. And that's so true. Our attention was mostly in our head, and our feet were so far away. So we bring our attention to our feet and we learn how to relax them and make them feel comfortable. How, how are your toes now? If you can't feel your toes, just wiggle them. When you wiggle your toes, you can start to experience the sensations in them. And you can know whether your toes are comfortable or they're in a bad position. But after a while you can do more than that. I'm looking at the toes in my left foot and relaxing all of them. When you have kindfulness, you get this wonderful quality called feedback. You can see just how your attitude can relax a part of your body, like your toes, which you never thought you could relax. And my toes feel so comfortable. I move the attention up my feet, the soles of the feet, the uppers, the heels, the ankles. And sometimes I pause at one place. I'm pausing on my uppers now, the top of the foot. And with kindfulness, 
It's very easy to relax them. How do you do that relaxing? You kind of wish it to be relaxed, maybe change a little attitude towards those feet. And you feel them get sort of more at ease, more comfortable. You don't even need to touch them or do anything. Just paying attention to them. I can feel I'm not quite sure what is relaxing, but it feels much more at ease than when I began. And this is the way we do this relaxing to the max with our body at the very beginning of the meditation. It builds up present moment awareness. It builds up kindness. It builds up awareness. Awareness is not just to know, it's to be react appropriately to what mindfulness tells you. So I'm moving my attention up from my feet, which are really at ease now, to my ankles. I haven't sprained my ankles for a long time now. But nevertheless, if there's any stress or injury to your ankles, you just put your attention down there. You can feel them, how they are. And once you have that contact with your own ankles, then you can give this beautiful, beautiful kindness. Ankles, may you be well and happy. May you be strong. And just continuing to focus down there, soon you pick up the sensations in your ankles. And you can give them so much strength. And they will be strong and they won't ache or cause you any pain. <coughs> It also saves you a lot of money from going to a chiropractor or a physio. Then you go up your legs, your calves. It's not just the muscles in the back of your lower legs. It's the skin and the bones, the ligaments. It's like you're doing a scan with one of these electronic machines on your lower legs. You can see what's happening there. But more than what a scan can do, you use that feedback to relax those muscles, relax those bones, relax everything. Sometimes you say, well, you can't relax bones. You can. At least that's what it feels like. And you go to your knees. When you develop awareness of these parts of your body, you really develop awareness, you stay there, you don't get bored, you get interested. How aware can I be of the feelings in my knees? And as you become more aware of that feeling, you learn how to relax them. Just the same way when you were a kid, you learn how to hold something in your hands, how to lift up your left hand, lift up your right hand. Now you're learning how to relax the feelings in your knees. Bit of trial and error. And you find them more at ease than when you began. And we go to your thighs. I'm being aware of my thighs now. They're pretty comfortable. But I can still relax them even more. And all those blood vessels going through your thighs all those muscles, the skin, everything. You relax to the max. Relaxing to the max takes a lot of mindfulness, a lot of kindness. But it's amazing what it can do. And then I go to my up, keep going up my body. Now I go to the, the buttocks. And you always when I start being aware of my buttocks, I always feel the pressure of my body weight transfer, transferred through the muscles of the buttocks to the, cha to the chair or the cushion I'm sitting on. I can never delete that feeling of pressure in my buttocks, but what happens, I make it as comfortable as possible as even as possible. 
and then that feeling doesn't change. Because it doesn't change, it becomes like an ambient sound. After a while, it turns off. You can't feel anything down there. It hasn't happened yet, but in a minute or two, I know by experience, it will disappear. And that allows me to go further up my body and go to my waist. Now sometimes people prefer leaning back against the backrest or the chair, or you can sit up straight. And maybe it's just because I've been doing this for such a long time, I prefer stretching my back and then letting go. My back feels so much more comfortable. It allows me to sit sometimes for hours like this. My back is comfy. Once I've done that, I go inside my body. I go up my digestive tract. You're just feeling, how are you? And as I go up, my stomach's pretty good today. So I just sweep up the digestive tract. If you feel any thing which is a bit uh, not ordinary or tense or painful. All you do, what all what I would do, be mindful of it. And instead of discarding it, going right inside of it, being more mindful of it than I have ever been before. Even though it's uncomfortable, when I go right inside it and give it kindness, it's like you have a bruise and somebody strokes it kindly and it tends to relax. And that's what I do with my mind, even to my digestive tract inside my body. And you find that that digestive tract does already begin to feel so much more comfortable. You learn by giving things attention how much you can relax them. It feels so much better. And this becomes really important because many people, they have problems with their digestion. Some people have colon cancers and other digestive problems. And this is how you can catch those problems before they get strong or you can still do something about them, just with your mind. I've got so much confidence in this because I've been doing it a long time and teaching it to others. And then you go up and for those women here, when you get up to your breasts, too many people have cancers there. Sometimes you can catch it before even a doctor can find it. You can feel that there's something imbalanced in that area of your body. Something not quite right. And once you can feel that, you don't get worried. You give it a big, a big boost of kindness and relaxation. You have that feeling and you can actually feel it change get less intense, less troublesome, until it relaxes so much, the feeling disappears. And all the rest of your body, as you go up your body, when you get to your shoulders, here it's easier to relax those shoulders. What I usually do, I scrunch up the sh shoulders make them really tight and scrunchy, and then let go. I like teaching that, because sometimes people ask me, how do you let go? What is letting go? That's how you let go. The attitude of not holding things, letting things be loose, not forcing things, putting things down, like scrunching your shoulders and then letting go. You all could do that. And then I go down my arms. If there's anything there which needs some attention, 
I'd pause there and give kindness. And I go down my forearms to my hands. One thing which I always do, I get to my fingers and ask myself, how, you, how are you now? I did that a moment ago, and my fingers said I, I hadn't really cared for them. They were all over the place. So I changed them and put them in a, a comfortable meditation position. For me, that's the left hand over the, so the right hand over the left hand, with the thumb slightly touching. My fingers feel comfortable there. Because they feel comfortable, I know they won't bother me for the rest of the meditation. So I go up to my shoulders, my neck, and my head. One thing I always do is to make sure my head is well balanced on top of the neck. If it's not, it can cause a headache. So I move it to the left, the right, forward and back. So I feel this is the best balance of my head on top of my neck. And last of all, I have awareness of the feelings around my eyes, my nose and my mouth. And I relax those feelings. So the eyes are closed but not closed tightly. The mouth is closed but loosely. And the whole face feels as comfortable as I can possibly make it. And that's helpful because all disturbing emotions, they always cause a scrunching up, a twisting of the muscles in the face. That's why you know someone is angry or they're depressed. By relaxing the muscles in the face, it just relaxes some of the negative emotions which hinder the peace of meditation. <coughs> so now my whole face is at ease my whole body. Now I can feel this whole body relaxed to the max. And I get to know it's relaxed. It's a fly name, it's on my nose. I get to know it's relaxed when I can feel this experience of the joy of relaxation. It's a pleasure. And once I can experience that, the relaxation, relaxation goes even deeper. There's something in meditation which is important. That by relaxing, first of all the body, and later on the breath, you get to the delightful feeling of relaxation. The delightful breath. Anyway, now I turn to the mind, the body's relaxed, ready for meditation. And the first thing I do is notice that because I've been watching the feelings in the body for the first 20 minutes, I am actually in this present moment. Because the feelings, that's where they exist. And so I focus my awareness in the present past and the future have mostly disappeared. So I stay in this present moment, I know what it's like to be present. And the more you relax in the present moment, the more comfortable it feels. When you feel the comfort of the present moment, no business to be done in past or future. It's like being free, free from work. You can rest, relax. You take the present moment even deeper. And you get to the silent mind. After a while meditating, you love silence. The most beautiful music in the world. And you also notice, in the present moment, and silence. The more you are in this moment, the more silent you are, the more mindful you are. 
There's my definition of Buddhist mindfulness. In this moment, silent, just observing, feeling, knowing, and not talking back at the world. I just stay there for a few moments. I just notice in this moment, in silence, that's usually where the breath just comes up all by itself. Just aware of the breath coming in, aware of the breath going out. Not trying, not forcing, but being at ease. Meditation is supposed to relax things, give you peace. I watch the breath peacefully. Mm. If you remain in this present moment just now, you find time loses its meaning. Just stay here, doesn't matter how many minutes it is. It's like another burden, counting seconds, minutes, is put down so you're free from having to be concerned about time. Just know what it feels like now. Just a little breath coming in, or a little breath going out. We are coming close to the end of the meditation now. Don't do anything. Just know how you feel. Can you kind of understand the difference between now, how you feel, and when you started this meditation? To know its result? How relaxed is your body? And how comfortable does it feel? And how peaceful is your mind? What does peace feel like? After a while, you recognize the joy of peace. When you really get to know it, it's a very, very happy and pleasurable experience. It encourages you to meditate more and more and more. If for nothing else, the sheer peace and joy of it. The other benefits such as Good health, 
becomes kind of like a, a free, gri free gift, a side effect, but very welcome anyway. So I'm now going to ring the gong three times to end the meditation. Please wait for the last sound from the gong to disappear before opening your eyes. Thank you for joining in the meditation.